the big idea as we start this morning. Jesus gave up heaven to come to earth, to live as a human and die as a human. Jesus chose humility and living to serve others, offered up his life as a ransom for many. It was this act of love that caused him to be given the name above all names. Let's pray. Lord, help us to put others before ourselves, to be obedient and faithful to your high calling. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, this is an incredible time of year for Christians and all the world. As we pray that hope and peace we have in our faith, others might know. Go into all the world and preach the gospel takes on an urgency when we look at the world's state of affairs. Yet, we have nothing to fear and so much to rejoice in. A theme as we jump into the idea of passion messages is this. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, it wasn't the nails that kept him. It wasn't the threat of the Roman legions or the hatred of the Jewish elite. Rather, it was his passion for humanity that led him to take the punishment of our own sins upon himself. Jesus gave up his life so that we might have eternal life. He was fueled by unconditional and sacrificial love. And God the Father so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. God gave us the greatest gift, Jesus, through whom we might all experience everlasting life and forgiveness. And as you may have heard, it's more blessed to give than to receive. In Acts 28, we read that. A current modern day example of self-sacrifice are those in the Ukraine who are willing to stand up to a modern day Goliath, not because they are self-proclaimed heroes, not because they are extra brave, many without combat skills, but they have a love of family, a love for friends, and a love for country, and a love for freedom, passion. Men and women are willing to pay the ultimate price so their children may live free and their country might remain united. Love combined with a strong commitment in what you believe in can change your circumstances. We are praying for peace, but what an example of love. Love for the right things should move us in so many ways. Watching this week, it was so moving. Watching Ukrainians embrace young Russian soldiers who were killing their people, persecuting them. But these young Russian boys who were captured were crying for their moms. They were shown good Samaritan love. They were fed. They were given warm tea and allowed to come home or allowed to call home. The captors telling the Russian mom at the other end, you can come here and pick up your boy. Imagine, in war. In a world so full of hate, war so vicious, what a righteous act. Praise God for these examples of humanity. It warms me. To love your enemy can restore us in so many ways. And this type of example, I'm sure would be one that Jesus would share if he was telling a parable for today. Yet the parables were already written. He foretold all of this during his ministry. We can take his mission, then his words, his actions, and apply it today. God's word is never old. It's new every day and with every generation. Think of Jesus, the sinless son of God, who embarked on a life mission of love with a passion for humankind. 
a passion to see a fallen world free from themselves. What a gift and what a God. He was fueled by love, as we've already discussed. But if love was the fuel, then there was some other additives present in the life of Jesus. One of these irreplaceable additives was humility. Jesus was and is the humble king who serves a world in desperate need. Philippians 2, 5 to 11, read so well this morning, helps us understand how Jesus displayed his passion for humanity while on on earth and on the cross. And notice that Paul calls to have the same mindset as Christ before we are told what that mindset is. In verse 5, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Paul, more than many, came to understand that those who are used by God for great things are often outside of their comfort zones. He knew that all of his life had to be surrendered to God. Which begs the question for us today, Have you surrendered everything to God? Have you surrendered your thoughts to God? Have you surrendered your mindset to God? One of the most well-known passages in scripture comes from the book of Philippians, which says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Yes. And George Bernard Shaw said, those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. And if we're going to think like Christ and have the mindset of Christ, we need to be changing our minds empowered by the spirit of God. We need to have the passion Jesus had for humility Vanity and self-importance is so easy to fall into as it's pleasant to be lifted up, but it's how far we take it or who we give the credit to. Do we say, thank God for the opportunity and the gifts he has given me? And yes, we need encouragement within the body of Christ, but might we remember where the honor and glory should channel to the father Paul says about Jesus, having the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God, something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. So I encourage you to take some time this week, if you can, and have another look at Philippians 2, 1 to 11. Great passage. Jesus acted in humility and obeyed in humility. All along, God was working in the life of Christ. And the same is true for us. God is able to use every situation, every frustration, every obstacle, every last thing for the good for those who love him. And as we learn to trust him, we learn the value of obedience and faithfulness, which leads us to look more and more like Christ. There are so many examples of the humility of Christ. In the Gospel of Luke, we get a picture of Jesus praying to God on the Mount of Olives. Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Consider the hurting heart of Jesus. He was in anguish. Our Lord in anguish. He knew his fate. He must have been mentally feeling the agony he was about to submit to. And he still went back to the father. He prayed harder than ever, yet the book was written. 
despite the desire of Jesus to avoid this horrible fate, he humbly submitted to the will of the Father. That is heart wrench. That's a heart wrenching vision for me. Thinking of our beloved Lord in such turmoil because of us, me. And we can learn so much, but we can also love him even more for that commitment that he's had for us and to us. Jesus was in anguish as he prayed. Even still, he humbled himself and gave himself to the will of God, which led to the cross. Humility is fundamentally about others. It's not about thinking less of yourself. It's literally thinking about yourself less. Focusing your time and energy and the thoughts on others. Becoming more we-focused and less me-focused. Even Pilate, the one who holds on to the human fate of Jesus, does not believe Jesus has done anything to deserve to die the death of a criminal. And yet he does. This is what obedience to the Father looked like for Jesus. Jesus could have played that interaction to his favor at any time. The exchange with Pilate could have helped Jesus in escaping the brutal death facing him. Yet, Jesus stayed the course. He acted humbly to the will of his Father. How often do we pray a similar prayer as Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane? Lord, may your will be done. There is something humbling about realizing how incapable we are to save ourselves. We are called to entrust that part to Jesus' sacrifice. This is what obedience for us looks like day by day. It looks like bowing before Christ every day on our knees, inviting him into our story and thanking him for his sacrificial love. Obedience cost Christ his very life. And of course, this reminds me of that powerful passage that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And remember, to the glory of God the Father. Stories of great humility almost always cause us to take a step back and offer our admiration to those involved. And obviously, the example of Jesus, who gave his very life for those he loved, stands as the gold standard of humility and sacrifice. Jesus had a humble mindset and a humble posture. As Paul relates in our Philippians passage, again, I have to read it, it's so good. Jesus, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Jesus acted in humility in the most unbelievable way. He did not count his godly nature as something to take advantage of or hide behind. Instead, he willingly chose to make himself nothing by trading his godly nature for that of a servant. He acted in humility, became human, and was born into a poor family. And the rest, they say, is history. Stories of humility are so striking because they're so rare. It's become almost unbelievable to us that people would take time out of their busy lives to serve and love others. Which is probably why Jesus told us to act in humility, to serve and love one another, and to give all the glory to the process. Humility is so powerful because being selfish is a normal human operating procedure. And Jesus taught us to break the norm, be radical, and love others. It starts with how you think, and it grows into selfless acts of service for others. And it continues in obedience to the great calling of Christ in our lives. 
one of the most important steps we can take as it relates to mirroring Christ's humility is the step of obedience. It's one thing to act in a humble way towards others, but it's another to obey humbly before God. The Apostle Paul says that when Jesus appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Look at the grassroots ministries that begin with nothing but obedience. Think about churches who's humbly submitted and rebuilt despite the storms. And there are different reasons to use the word remnant when referring to the Israelites in the Old Testament and the New Testament. But they were also reduced to a remnant. God empowered them and kept all of his promises. The remnant is bigger than ever, and the ultimate promise of God was fulfilled. The suffering servant came and reigns as king. He sits at the right of the Father, and we have the hope of being part of his heavenly reign one day. What was the result of Jesus being obedient? Scripture makes it incredibly clear that Jesus did not remain in the grave. Praise God. Instead, all of the pain and suffering in the life of Christ served a purpose, just as it does in ours. God can use the good times, the tough times, the hard and agonies in your life for awesome events for now and in the future. So friends, consider the road of humility this coming week. Where are the areas in our life where we need to think about others Put them first and trade your life for theirs. How can you lift others up, encourage them, and help them to feel loved? Might we all be encouraged as we strive for a Christ-like mind? As Nancy read this morning, we are promised in Romans. And another great verse. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Friends, as we prepare to share the Lord's table this morning, may we remember the sacrifice of our Lord. As we walk with Jesus towards Holy Week, remember his humility in all things. Hold on to his passion for humanity and his desire to honor the Father by action, thought, and obedience. Amen. Let's pray. Father, how we thank you for the wonderful example of true humility that is seen in the life and ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, who despite being God incarnate, lived his life in humble submission to you, learning to be both submissive and obedient by the things that he suffered. Thank you, Lord, that in union with Christ, we have the mind of Christ, as we also submit to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Help us to develop the beautiful spiritual fruit of humility that is so important in the lives of all your children, if we are to grow in grace and to mature into a deeper knowledge of our Lord and Savior. Help us not to do anything out of selfish ambition or foolish vanity, but rather may we develop the godly grace to regard the needs and desires of others as being more important. Teach us, we pray, to live as Christ lived in the power of the Spirit and to your praise and glory. In the precious name of Jesus, amen.